Team, I am so excited at everyone's progress um, this past week working on the scavenger quilt. In the previous step, people traced the left side of their body, and I saw some amazing innovations with turning on your side to trace the front of your body, with dropping your elbow down to trace that, bent knees, they looked amazing. There was so much diversity in the way that bodies were traced and also really thoughtful choices in terms of the meaning of the color of the background fabric as well as the color used for your bodies that you traced. The second part of week one was to make a birthday block and so people measured month in inches across, day in inches down, and then they chose a color that reflected their birthstone. There were some great innovations there in terms of some people put their block on a diagonal. You can still tell which is the top and which is the bottom with that orientation. It looked beautiful and interesting. I also had my very good friend Sarah did two blocks. She is basing her quilt on her experience as a mother and looking at it, the quilt as a self-portrait of that motherhood aspect of herself. And so she did a block for both herself and her child. And the way that she layered those blocks looks amazing and is very thoughtful. She also is someone with a very, very tiny birthday block. And so that was a part of her way of making that an important special part of the quilt so that it didn't get forgotten because certainly those of you born January 1st are going to have the tiniest. Hers isn't quite that small, but it's not a big block either. So very thoughtful in terms of that. There was a great question brought up about having a diamond birthstone and I thought that could be a great opportunity to use a transparent type of a fabric like what I've used on some of my other uh, quilts that have a layer of silk or polyester or thin cotton on top of something, but whatever to you resonates as connecting to that birthstone, uh, clear is, can absolutely be done in lots of ways. The birthday block, also um, Isle of Sky on Instagram, she embroidered eyes on her block because she's born in March and always thought about the eyes of March that she would say as a child as the eyes of March. And so for her, that was a clear association with her month being March. There are so many ways that you could be creative with the birthday block. I could see embroidering other things on it and references to what happens that time of year, that month. Certainly I know being a December baby, both of my parents were born the same week as me, so I could have potentially done something special with that. Um, it's also the same month as Christmas and other holidays, so there are, there are many ways to be playful and to see what, what resonates for you with your birthday block. As we continue, this month has a new prompt, so we're going to be adding some things to our quilt top. And I'm going to read from QuiltCon magazine in my article about this next step. So it's a 12-step pattern, and we're trying to plow through in eight weeks. So last week we did step one and two. This week we are just doing step three. Step three is touch. Locate four to five things that you touch daily and trace them from any angle onto a scrap of fabric of your choice. Applique the shapes to the top right of the quilt. So they do need to be in the top right and you should touch them daily and that can be interpreted by you. And I say scrap on here, but if you have yardage that you're attached to, you can absolutely trace them on any fabric that you own that feels right. But try to make it a fabric that you already own rather than going out to find something new. So to explain what I did on my sample quilt, the first 
version of this quilt that I made. You can see in this top right corner, I have traced my underwear. That's one that is, you know, I don't touch the same exact pair of underwear every day. But years ago, I'm trying to think how many years ago, back in 2013, maybe 14, I had been, I talk about this in my mending lectures a lot too, so it felt like a fun way to incorporate that. But back then, I was talking to my therapist about how I was mending my underwear because the brand I loved had been discontinued 10 years prior and what in the world was I going to do because it was disintegrating. And that's when I learned about The Highly Sensitive Person, which is a book that's meant a lot to me and is about people having a highly sensitive nervous system. So I realized that I felt my underwear more than other people did. And that's part of why it was causing these problems for me that other people did not appear to be having. So I found this Hanes brand, thank God, I can wear it, it doesn't cause me any issues. Um, it's not as great as what I had before, but it does the job. So I, every day, wear this brand of underwear, and I've got, <laughs> from back then, three packs that I bought that I haven't even opened yet because I knew I wanted to not have this problem again five or ten years down the line. So here is my underwear that I traced because I wear the same brand, same shape, every day. I also traced my toothbrush. Interestingly enough, since I made this quilt, I replaced my toothbrush. So it is not the exact same toothbrush, something interesting to keep in mind as well. I traced my Fitbit that I wear every day since June, and that's been a really fun way for me to track things, and I like this. To me, I think of it as a dad, dad watch, because it reminds me of what my dad had back in the 80s and 90s, but I traced that, and it is on my quilt, and then finally, I thought my cell phone that I touch every day is kind of a boring shape, but the cell phone cord could be a very interesting shape. So I laid that cell phone cord down and was able to trace that and have something a little more dynamic than a rectangle. So that was my path first time around on the quilt. I have been thinking a lot since then about what I would trace this time around. I plan to trace all different things. And so for me, part of what's interesting about this challenge, things I touch every day, I am a person that travels a lot. So for me, what made sense is what would make it into my suitcase that I touch every day. And that's different from what I touch every day when I'm just at home. So I do still want to stick with that quantifier of what would go in my suitcase with me. What do I touch with my skin every day? So I am well known, similarly with my highly sensitive person aspect, that if I have my pillow, I can go anywhere. So I do not travel anywhere without this pillow. It's one that I made myself by cutting up a memory foam pillow into little chunks and and so anyways it's strange but it works for me and I really love it and this I just squish up or put in the top of my suitcase and this goes everywhere with me if I forget my pillow it's really a traumatic affair so I'm gonna trace this you'll notice it's big so I'm gonna have to think of a creative way to crop it down so that it's not too large on my quilt Next up, I have been taking elderberry syrup every day since the fall, and I made it myself, and in one of my monthly newsletters, I wrote about elderberry syrup, and I thought, I don't want to trace the bottle necessarily, that doesn't to me feel like an elderberry, but I've got this package of dried elderberries that I used, and so... This is the dried, tiny elderberry. 
I might not trace something that small, but I think a cluster that is more representative of the actual plant, because that's the essence of what I'm tracing, I'm going to do that. So I won't be tracing the actual bottle of elderberries or these actual dried elderberries, but I'm going to be thinking about the real plant. And I'm going to use a color that is evocative of that. So my friend Nancy Gildart, who is a um, who has been an advisor for me at SAIC. She mailed me these purple fabrics recently. I'm going to use them as well as this purple fabric that I used a long time, that I bought a long time ago. I will use to make something that looks like an elderberry. And I may even incorporate some embroidery that will make it look more like the original fresh plant. I have also selected a fabric for my pillow, and that is just based on, I think these colors are gonna look great. So this is the fabric for my pillow that I'm planning to use. Next up is, um, let's see. I thought, what do I for sure touch every day? I have made a big commitment since I was in India to drink warm water on a regular basis throughout the day, as opposed to letting myself drink things that have cooled down in open air. So I have got a whole lot of different thermos bottles. So again, the thing that I'm tracing is not this huge collection of thermoses or cups, but instead the idea of water. So I don't know yet what that will look like. I do think that I want to use this fabric, which is a beautiful Japanese woodblock print that my mom bought for me at a garage sale in Florida years ago. And I'm gonna have to see what shape feels right for that. And again, if maybe some embroidery will help with the many different shapes that these thermoses are. Or maybe I'll trace all the thermoses and do more than five pieces of applique. We'll see. And I have been very committed for, I guess also as a highly sensitive person, I use moisturizer, especially on my face, every single day. If I, if I don't add moisturizer to my skin, I feel terrible. And uh, Mythic med Medicinals, um, Medicine Stories on Instagram, she has, um, her name is Amber Magnolia Hill, and she has some amazing podcasts where she also talks about being a highly sensitive person and body oiling. And so this is one of many oils that I like to use. This one in particular is a mix of redwood and mugwort. Ah, redwood and mugwort in olive oil. But I also have things from Banyan Botanicals, things from my trip to India, oils that are particular plants that I got from brands like Plant Therapy or Eden's Garden. And um, also a lot of whole plant herbal oils that I have made myself. So based on Amber and her teacher, Cami McBride, I've done a lot of whole plant infusions in olive oil that then I use. For example, I have one where I foraged spruce tips from my brother's backyard and then infused those fresh spruce tips into olive oil. And I love using that. And I put it on my whole body and especially on my face and depending on my mood and what's going on, I choose the right oil for the moment. So the idea of oil in general and the multitude of different oils seemed like something really authentic to me that I touch every day. So I've found this fabric that I bought when I was traveling in India. It is a think a type of shot cut fabric so it's green on one side and yellow on the other side woven together so it has some of that shimmer that oil has and much like the water I'm gonna have to figure out a way to uh, trait what shape will this be it will be a shape that feels like 
oil to me. Maybe I'll even trace part of my body that I put the oil on. I don't know yet. I'm going to figure it out. The last thing that I am going to trace is a relatively new adaptation to my daily schedule, but it's a habit that I am committed to wanting to build for myself. So this is a daisy thermometer and it is a way of tracking fertility. So based on my basal body temperature, it will tell me where I am in my month long cycle. And I have been working really hard the last few years to uh, improve my health in that area and to have a more even regular cycle and that is a result of having been on birth control for a long time. I had terrible periods as a um, very young woman like when I was 19 and 20 and they were debilitating to the point that I was afraid what would happen if I was out in public or driving because I would get white spots in my vision, I would lose circulation in my arms and legs and they'd feel like I would, they were falling asleep, I would get lightheaded, um, clammy, sweating everywhere. It was terrible and doctors told me the only thing to do about it was go on birth control to numb those symptoms and it worked. But I think that then other things that that was a warning signal for were able to take root and, and cause health problems for me. So part of my personal journey with improving my health has been not suppressing symptoms by being on birth control, but instead allowing my body to have its natural cycle and seeing how I can work with that to feel better and be in better health. And so um, this awareness of when I'm ovulating and where I am in my cycle, I think is going to be really powerful for me improving my health. And so it's just a thermometer that I use and I'm going to be tracing that. And to me, what color, what better color than this bright red for tracing my cycle. So this is a beautiful fabric that my friend Takako bought for me when she went to Japan a while back. Uh, she told me she was going and said, hey, would you like me to bring some fabric back for you? And I said, I can't believe that you'll share part of your 50 pounds in your suitcase with me. But yes, I would love that. And I gave her some cash and she brought me back a huge amount of beautiful fabrics. In fact, in this first quilt, a different block that's coming up, uh, this circle shape, is some fabric that she also purchased for me and it has it was already mended when I received the fabric so that red seems like the right color for this thermometer so this is definitely a longer video than the other one because it's been a while of me just explaining what and why I'm tracing but I think that that is core to this step a lot of the other techniques that I'm going to use to trace will be similar to the techniques that I demonstrated last week, so we won't go as in-depth with them. I would like to share, like you can see here my image of me and the, the items that I was tracing. I would like to share that I am hoping to do some Instagram stories throughout the week with some very special friends of mine who've been working on this quilt, and so there should be a story with me talking with my friend Sarah, who had the two birthday blocks, and discussing her thoughts around the things that she's going to trace. Also, my friend Zach Foster, who is an incredible quilter in New York City. I had him test out this pattern previously, and it was an earlier version of the pattern, so he, he had different rules from what all of us have, but the touch items were still part of it and he felt like it was a little too intimate to trace in exquisite detail the things that he was using so he actually just made a rectangle with the height and the length or the, the height and the width so I'm hoping that we can talk to him a little bit more together to learn about how and why he did that and uh, you know certainly even things like this thermometer 
it doesn't have to be traced this way. It could be traced on its side. And the, uh, you know, there are a lot of creative solutions to how you can trace something. It doesn't have to be the most obvious way that follows all the rules. There are hopefully many creative solutions out there that I have not yet thought about and I'm very excited to see how you interpret this based on what feels authentic to you. The important, to me at least, the most important part of this prompt is contemplating what you touch every day and your version of every day and your version of that item same as my toothbrush that I threw out the one I traced already or you know or recycled uh, how how that evolves over time and what feels true to you is important if you don't travel as much as I do maybe fitting it in a suitcase and traveling with it doesn't matter Maybe it would be a doorknob in your home if you've lived in the same home for decades. There are so, so many ways. But in terms of what feels authentic to you with what you touch with these guys or a different part of your body, uh, that's where you're going to find the, the truest answer to this prompt for yourself. And again, you want to trace four to five items and you want them to reside in the top right corner of your quilt. They can overlap one another. They can be all stacked side by side. They can be in any orientation compared to one another that feels true to you. So uh, we'll check in in a little bit when I've made some progress sewing. Here you can see that I have been tracing freehand with my scissors to cut out my pillow. I'm attempting to capture some of the nuance of the shape of the pillow, but I didn't use any yarn or paper or anything fancy to trace it. I'm just allowing for the organic edge with my scissors. I've used some paper from my recycling bin to more accurately trace my basal bodied thermometer so that that can be an accurate tracing that I will create a quarter of an inch seam allowance when I cut it out and then I will be able to fold those edges under so that it is a very accurate shape and size when I'm done. Having cut out my tracing, now I'll use my rotary cutter to cut out the fabric at the appropriate size. And now I'm ready to iron. For my elderberries, I freehand cut 21 because it felt like an auspicious number of these circles in my three different purple fabrics that I wanted to use. And I will not be ironing these under. I will be using an embroidery ho hoop and finger turning them with my needle to applique the edges under. I love a nice hot steamy iron for ironing things under. And so you can see that I have ironed under the edges of my applique that needs ironing. And I I'm okay with this silhouette being the way that it is. My one of the two sample quilts that was made for this project, one being by Bill Keller, the Kilted Quilter, you can see that he was incredibly precise with his items and even appropriate with the colors. But I like to allow things. So for me, that is a pretty precise version of my thermometer. When I've been going around my pillow, I had one area that was a little more tricky because it was an interior corner rather than an external corner. These external corners we covered last time and they're pretty simple. But here, it's it's not folded over at that full quarter of an inch. You can see it's just a, a seam. Depending on what you're up to, you might even need to snip in a little bit. 
but a technique that I like when I'm stitching things down, as you know, last time I demonstrated the running stitch. And so, for example, on this completed quilt, there's a running stitch. And some of these stitches that I did were soft corners. But then I wanted to do one that was more precise. And so here you can see I've just added one single stitch that goes inward. In a recent workshop that I taught at the Wisconsin Museum of Quilts and Fiber Arts, my and at QuiltCon recently teaching as well, my students did beautiful things with just these occasional whip stitches mixed in with the running stitch. So there's beautiful stuff you can do and I intend to do one or maybe even like five or seven of those whip stitches when I get to this point in my applique. With just three of my five items cut out, I already have a lot of options to play here in terms of the placement of these items. Being in the top right corner doesn't mean they have to be jammed in there, just generally top right. This large pillow could be cut off Things could also be layered, so for example, this could be on here, or it could be partially on. So there are a lot of options for ways that they could interact and be on the quilt. Next up, I need to figure out how I'll use these two fabrics. Here I have for you a collection of my water containers, plus over here is the water container that I'm currently drinking out of for warm water. And then here is a small view of my different oils that I like to use. So I'm going to have to think about what shape accurately represents these things in my life because I certainly do touch oil and water on a daily basis. It just didn't feel enough like a pillow to me to have the pillow on a diagonal. So instead I decided to cut the pillow in two parts so that it would fit. Um, it didn't fit without overlapping even at the bottom of the quilt. So cutting it up feels right and it kind of matches with the way that I wanted this pair of birds. You know, pillows often are in pairs too and I like that energy in the quilt of having two of them. I'm going to, after I cut out the back of my pillow applique, then I will applique my thermometer in place. And I like it on top of this fabric since it has so much red in it. And then my elderberries will be clustered in here and maybe even overlapping on things. And I googled a photograph of elderberries to get some inspiration for how to cluster them. And I'm going to do all this work while I continue to contemplate how I can trace oil and water. I've formed this tracing paper around my face so that I know what shape to make my oil. And it's going to go about here. I've completed appliquing my first three items. For the oil, it felt right to also trace my fingers because that's how I apply the oil to my face. And then for my water, I'm going to trace the lids of my five most likely vehicles for the water. And so there will be five circles for that. You can see over here I've used some knots thoughtfully for the stem areas on my elderberry flowers. So those are sticking up. You can see for scale. And my thermometer has been appliqued in place as well. So clearly a lot more than five pieces of applique this time around. <laughs> Let's see, 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. So 34 pieces of applique to trace four to five things. 
just as an example of how this can be your own and a little bit unique. In full disclosure, I traced the actual lips of the containers that I drink from and not the lids because that's the part I touch the most. And I have traced them onto this tissue paper, which was helpful for being able to fussy cut so that it's a pretty part of the print and the part that I want. And I'm going to cut them out kind of rough with my rotary cutter and that way then I'll be able to keep that tracing paper in place as I aim for a relatively accurately sized circle. I really wanted my fingers to be accurate so I traced them onto this Kleenex lid and I'm going to iron the fabric around each finger once I've cut it out. Ah, I'd never done that before, but it worked out pretty good. This fabric held a crease great without any steam because it was burning my fingers um, and without any starch either. So those are the perfect finger shape now to applique in place. I learned that years ago and I'd never done it before. Now in the light of day we can see how my quilt top turned out with all five items that I touch every day, 34 pieces of fabric appliqued down. For contrast, this is the first version of the quilt that I did, four items and four pieces of applique. As we look close, as I promised before, this area I did some special whip stitches to help secure it. You can see that I used the knots to look like the stems or starting points of my elder flowers, and I used three different kinds. Yeah, see in the light you can tell the difference. Three kinds of fabric. Up here I liked how the water in the different containers that I used for keeping it warm. I liked how they looked a bit like moons. Here for the oil that I apply to my skin every morning, I used that paper piecing method to get a more accurate representation so it would look like fingers. And then I also have this impression that I traced. You can see that I haven't cut the printed fabric out from underneath this. I'll have to think about if uh, the silk is opaque enough to be able to cut that away. Or if maybe because it's representing oil, maybe I like seeing the print underneath. My only item that's represented with just one piece of fabric, my thermometer. It's fun seeing these and noting the ones that I've already used today. Of course, I woke up with my pillow that didn't fit, so I had to put it sideways here. And then I applied oil to my face and my fingers, of course. I didn't put it anywhere else yet today. I'm using my largest mouth cup for some coffee. I took my temperature. The only thing I have yet to do is to take my elderberry syrup, but everything else I've already been in contact with this morning. So there you have it. That is my quilt. So in conclusion, I hope that you will take advantage of a variety of tools so that the tracing is as accurate or as ambiguous as you want. You might use an embroidery hoop. This is a nice, real small one. You can see how small that is compared to my hand. You might also choose to use either a straight pin or an applique pin. I used a lot more regular straight pins this week than applique pins.
You can also take advantage of the bountiful free materials around you. So you might use some tissue paper, like the kind that would be in a Christmas gift or in a, you know, wrapping things from when you're shopping. You might also choose to use some cardboard, like from a Kleenex box or a cereal box. If you are tracing something super accurately, that is my favorite way to do it. If your fabric isn't holding, you certainly could use a little bit of starch or just mist it with some water. Somewhere I heard a DIY starch recipe. I think it was my friend Tara Phonin at QuiltCon, maybe, otherwise it was someone else. But I think you just mix some water with cornstarch and spray it. But don't trust me on that one because I've never done it. <laughs> just water is enough for me uh, with a little bit of cardboard. And in terms of how you know, true and accurate you need to be according to the pattern. Four to five items doesn't necessarily mean four to five pieces of fabric appliqued. It can take more than one piece of fabric or more than one cut to translate the idea of the thing that you're touching. You might need to cut your thing in half or into multiple pieces for it to fit on your quilt and that's fine. You might have an item that you touch every day, but the item itself changes over time, like a toothbrush. You might have wear a different version every day, like underwear, but it's the same brand. What else could you do? Certainly, you can be more ambiguous, like Zach Foster was, cutting out a square shape that would encompass your object. You could also cut out just kind of a, a loose, loose and wild thing if it's something you want more privacy around. You could have the print of the fabric represent the item more than the item itself. Say you love rosemary, the herb, and you cook with it every day. You might have a fabric that has rosemary printed on it and that could for you work instead of having to try to applique rosemary, that would be much more difficult than elderberry. You could also embroider the rosemary onto a piece of fabric or onto the quilt itself, that could work. You might, what else could you run into? Certainly, you know, if you brush your hair every day, I don't being a curly haired person, but if you use something like a comb, it could be hard to cut around all those intricate bits of the comb, so maybe that part would be embroidered. Uh, if you're doing something with sharp angles, a bone creaser is an excellent item. Next week I might do a demo showing how to use a bone creaser. And you know, see what feels right and true to you. You know which items you touch every day, the ones that are meaningful to you. If it's a necklace, maybe that could be all kinds of shapes. Maybe you cut it out thin or maybe you cut out the whole big shape that the necklace can make. Uh, that would be different from how I did my watch. You might also have, for example, a piece of jewelry like a wedding ring. That would be one of the truest forms of this prompt because it's an actual thing that you actually touch every day whether you're traveling or not traveling. It never changes. You don't swap it out for a new one. Uh, you know, not all of us have items that are that intimate that we truly touch it every single day, but that's an example of something that a person might touch every day. Perhaps if you swap your toothpaste, your toothbrush out all the time, but the brand of your toothpaste has remained the same for a long, long time. Maybe it would be truer to trace the toothpaste rather than to trace the toothbrush. You might also have a human in your life that you touch every day. Uh, I certainly, I don't think I even see somebody's picture every, every day. Uh, 
but there might be a person that you touch every day and so you might want to think about tracing part of their body whether it's a part of their body that you tend to touch more frequently than other parts or it's just a part that signifies who they uniquely are if they're a small enough person maybe you could even trace the whole person and put them on um, I'm sure if you're a nursing mother you're very aware of how intimately you touch your child every single day so why not the whole body if they squirm around which I imagine they do then all the more interesting shape that you would end up getting uh, you know it doesn't have to be super accurate that way but have fun with it think about what resonates for you what's meaningful and uh, you know if you really love and care about the fact that you touch your phone screen every day you can trace that rectangle but if you want to do something that's a more dynamic shape you can trace that shape too uh, it's all allowed and I so looking I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys trace have fun this week um, Next week's going to be a fun one. Lots of applique, minimum 16 pieces for everyone. So be ready for that. And I have had the most special time seeing everybody's posts throughout the week. I'm amazed that you had time to get it done this week. And uh, there's nothing more precious in life than our time. And I appreciate you trusting me with your time and following this pattern. And if you've made it to the end of this long video, I really appreciate you spending your time with me to do that. Hopefully you were sewing or appliquing something while you watched it. Uh, so I am very grateful to you and so appreciate uh, your going on this journey with me. So thanks and keep posting. Remember to post with hashtag scavenger hunt quilt and to also please tag me. Um, Heidi.Parks in the comments or tag me in the photo then for sure I'll get to see it if you you know ideally you'd be tagging both places in the photo and in the comments or a tag in the Instagram story that way I can reshare it on my feed so thank you and have fun this week and you know of course stay healthy <laughs> with those hands especially.